Welcome to our home. And we're so grateful that you tune in to these little videos. So I have another story to tell. <clears throat> and it begins with you imagining something. So imagine that maybe it's your birthday or Christmas or just any special, any day of the year, and you receive a, a spe very, very special gift. And it's wrapped so beautifully in the most beautiful paper, and it has this exquisite bow around it. Everything about it, the wrapping is perfect. And you look at it and you think, wow, I don't know if I deserve that kind of special present. And maybe I'll open it at a time when, I, when I'm feeling better. Or maybe, maybe when my life is more on track and I'm really doing good things in the world, maybe then I'll open it up. And so this present gets put into the closet and gets shoved further and further away. So, when I was 20, I was a nursing student at the Columbia University in New York City, and the hospital was huge, the largest one at the time in the whole country, many city blocks, and the abundance of patients, there were so many people that it was like a little city. And I had an OB rotation, which lasted for five months, and because there were so many patients, I got to see probably four to six births every, every day. And there were people who were the poorest of the poor and women that didn't want their babies. They already had eight babies at home. They didn't know what to do with those babies and, and they, they didn't want another one. This was before um, birth control was more accessible. And there were mothers who were very addicted and didn't even know what was going on and just didn't even want to look at the baby when the baby came out. And there were middle-class mothers that wanted their babies. And then there were extremely wealthy mothers, some of whom had paid a lot of money to uh, be able to get pregnant. And so the, there's nothing more in the whole world they wanted than the babies. So it's just this whole range of how much the babies were wanted. And then there was the baby itself. Some babies were born perfect in the eyes of the world. Other babies were born blind. Some were born without fingers and toes. Some were born with an enlarged head. Um, and some were born with medical problems. So it was just that whole range too. But the thing that was consistent, always without exception, whether the baby was wanted, whether the baby was perfect, was that at the moment that that baby was born, there was this light, this energy, this love that surrounded the baby. And it was so powerful every time it caused tears to flow from my eyes. And I would look around and all the nursing students would be crying. And even some of the medical students, I, it was just so, so moving. And I was such a simple person at that time. There was nothing, I never had heard of an aura or an energy field or anything different. I was two things. I was a student and I was in love with Barry. Mm -hmm. And that was my life. And so, but I felt this energy so, so powerful. The gift from our Creator. And that's the gift I was talking about in the beginning. We've all received this gift at the moment of our birth. And it's up to us in this life to really open the gift, take off the bows and, and the, the outer wrappings and fully receive the gift. Now, a lot of people feel that they can't receive that gift because they haven't been good enough. They're not perfect. They're not at a place in their life where they could even begin to receive that gift. In, in growing up, um, 
my mother was one of eight children, and the oldest sibling was my Aunt Dora. And Aunt Dora came from Sweden with her parents, and she was a very, very simple person. She hardly spoke at all. She had to drop out of school to help her parents support all the children. And she worked her whole life as a, as a housekeeper. And I mean, oftentimes there'd be a, a party and Aunt Dora wouldn't say a word, but she always spoke to me every time. And she always said the same thing. Joyce, are you being good? If you're not good, you're going to get coal in your stocking at Christmas. Oh. I don't know. Every, every, I grew up with this. And I saw my Aunt Dora probably every week. And what I, and so the message was, you, you have to be good. Otherwise, something bad is going to happen. And what I, what I, I learned in my 20s, that started to really open up, is that love, love, that love can't be taken away. It isn't contingent upon our being good or being perfect. It's a gift that was given to us at the moment of our birth. It's permanent. And I think that's a, the work of a lifetime, is to open this gift up completely and feel it, and feel those loving arms around you. And I've asked Barry to sing this song, which I feel is so perfect, that flows. Did you ever hear that story about the coal? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, of course. <laughs> Are you done? Yes, I'm done. Oh. Um, <clears throat> well, the thing about, the thing about uh, coal in your stocking at Christmas, Joyce's mother's side of her family were coal miners. I mean, her, your, your grandfather, mm-hmm. right? And your mother, your mother's father, and coal actually was precious. So, you know, yes, there's two meanings. You know, you can also <laughs> be <didn't> happy. <laughs> I know, I know. She, she all didn't, right. She didn't mean it that way. I okay, know. Barry. I, <laughs> no, she didn't. She didn't. It was. It was not a precious thing. <laughs> I know. All right. I just had to add that because because okay. it's coal is fuel too. You right? can see it a different way. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And 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 when you were talking about um, birth and that incredible burst of light at every birth, you know, I just you know it's true. I mean, those of you who have been at a birth or your own birth, you know that feeling. You know that incredible gift. So this song um, is uh, for those of us who sometimes feel alone. Um, Okay, that's all I'll say for that. Sometimes I feel all alone With no one to help me Like a child without a home With no comfort near me I just couldn't see you You seemed so far away So numb I couldn't feel you Didn't know you're here to stay But you're here God the time here 
with me all the time. You're here, God, all the time. Here with me all the time. You're here, God, all the time. Here with me all the time. You're here all the time, God. Here with me all the time. You're here all the time, God. You're here with me always. You're here all the time, God. You're here with me always. You're here all the time, God. You're here with me always. You're here all the time, God. You're here with me always. So just close your eyes a moment and feel that. You know, so many times you may feel alone in this world with no one to help you or no comfort around you. But feel, feel what is the real truth. There's always love around you. There's always divine presence around you. There's always God. There's always good. There's always angels and masters and great, great heavenly beings loving you and holding you. You're never alone. We're never alone. <sighs> Thank you. You can open your eyes if you're not already. <laughs> <clears throat> so we want you to fully open that gift of love. It's, it was given to all of us the very second that we were born. And nothing we've ever done can take that love away. And regardless of what's happening in your life right now, you can sit and open that gift and know that you are deeply loved. And we are right now just loving you, loving you, giving you all of our love because you deserve it. <laughs>